Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see behind me I have the new Give Energy system up and on the wall. This is a five kilowatt hybrid inverter, but it's just working as a PV inverter at the minute. There's no DC coupled battery. We've got a gateway and we've got the new all in one down on the floor there, which has got 13.5 kilowatts of battery storage inside it, along with an inverter that can make itself run independently of any PV system. So it's an AC coupled system. If you're a consumer in the market for a solar PV system, like one like this, where you can go fully off grid with all your house loads connected, please do get in touch. There's a link to the website alongside this video. Go and check it out, fill in a contact form, and I'd be happy to submit a proposal for your journey towards solar PV and battery storage in your home. But without further ado, let's get on with this video and see how all of this comes together. If you're an installer, a consumer, whatever, hopefully there's a bit of something in here that might help and guide you in the way you're putting these systems into use. I might get some good feedback on the way we can improve these as well. And if you're a consumer wondering how this stuff works and the benefits it might bring to you in your home, hopefully there's a few bits of information in here that's gonna help you out as well. Let's get straight to it. Measure twice and cut once. And that's what they say. 1.2. So you can see the hooks are in place and in this case we've used these hook stops. These are little padded tiles if you like that fit in with the existing roof tiles and then there's a flashing kit with a firm insert to stop any insects, rodents, whatever getting in and the weather of course. So and then we've got our angle on the Volk bracket and that attaches to the rail. You can see that's repeated all the way up and then across this roof all the way over there. We're just leveling these rails now. And then we're going to pop some panels on. So we've got six columns, two rows on there. And then we are going to try and fit in 
between these Voluxes if we can, I think we can, a couple of landscape panels here and another couple there. And you can see where we're working from up here. It's pretty cool. Uh, really nice place. And Matt and his lovely wife are looking after us very well here. And um, yeah, we're just going to get on with this now. Get some panels on and I'll show you what we've come up with up here in just a sec. So you can see we've got our panels all on. They're all nicely sat on the roof. We've got our clamps in the right place. It's a bit awkward when you're running your rails in vertical orientation because you're kind of tied to where the rafters are. We don't want to be putting noggins in all over the roof. It's not as structurally stable in my opinion, however you go about doing it. So it is what it is on that front. And again, we just need to cut these rails off. You can see Nathan's been down there and trimming all these, putting the end caps on. This roof is all over the place. If you see the ridge, it's up and down. It's also a wavy, so we have to go through a bit of a process with levelling these on the rails. And we've got it about as good as we can with what we're facing in terms of the roof structure. You're never going to get rid of every lump and bump when it is a bad one. It's just the movement you've got on the brackets holding the rail that'll dictate kind of where you can get with that. And we're happy with it. The customer thinks it looks good, which is fantastic. You can see the birds have already made a mess on here. Notice the shading. So these have all got optimizers on. Um, Tiga, Tiaga, Optimizers, I forget the name of the brand, I'll have a look and mention that later on in the video. Uh, we're just trimming these rails off, Nathan's working along, he's got his end caps to push down on the top there, we've got these to just tidy up along the bottom, and that'll make for a neat and tidy job. We can clean this scaffold down and away. The sun at the minute is up there, kind of tracks over behind this tree, so the reason these are all optimised is different bits of them are going to be in shade at different points in the day. Um, there's this tree here, but that's coming down, so that won't end up being a factor. I think the sun kind of comes up over there, moves across, and it goes down somewhere over there. Um, so the customer's going to trim some of these away too. And um, that should look like a nice finished uh, job of sunshine. We've done some measurements with the multimeters for the minute to make sure we've got our voltages right coming off the array. As we have, I think they were pumping out about 600 volts as a total between the... 12 panels which is what you would expect and obviously they're optimized as well for safety so if there's any kind of issue with any of these panels they will shut down and all of that good stuff. Milwaukee bandsaw if you are trimming your rails this is an absolute blessing it does fit around the van der Volk rail just to mention that these are van der Volk rails I've shown the panels going down before with your clamps and fixings so I'm not going to go into that in great detail on this video but essentially you can see the little notches in the back there these compress down into the appropriate notch so it's holding the panel nice and snug and then you tighten these down to clamp it onto the rail um, and then you're good to go you've got your end caps on there so I think you cut them just a bit past to house the end cap and that goes on and these are absolutely brilliant for that so if you're in into or thinking of getting in solar get yourself one of those so you've got a big softy on the ladders down there reason for that is this roof is very like fragile to say the least these tiles when they get a bit moist they seem to break really really easy so we've got a couple of sets of roofing ladders and the big softy just trying to be as gentle as we could but we've still had a fair number of breakages unfortunately but luckily we had plenty on hand so no great dramas Nathan's just having a bit of a turf out into the back of the van. I'm going to put a ground mount array over on that bank over there. So the customer runs all of this at the back here, all as far as you can see over there into the distance. And the car park that we've been working in is over there. So that's where that other submain goes to get a bit of a better view on the scaffold. It runs through in an underground duct, pops up in the car park, and then we've got all of our EV equipment in there. See the car just sticking out the back. There are plans to do something more with these workshops over at the end. So there's maybe going to be a bit more consumption down there, but not a great deal. Um, and then either a ground array here on level ground, but we've just been talking this morning and we think the best plan would be to put one on that bank over there. And um, yeah, that's where we're at with that one at the minute. So that's the array up there. We just need to get this scaffold down now and um, see how this all comes together. Without anything in the way of it, it should look nice. These old black panels are so much nicer than some of the older ones where you could see the cells and you have all the 
silver lines crisscrossing across them. I think they look lovely. They certainly make some roofs look better than they did before, especially when they're weathered by years and years uh, of sun, mold, rain, snow, and all the rest of the crap that gets thrown onto your roof. Um, and it's important if you are a consumer with a solar system to consider keeping these things clean. So make sure if you are going through the process of having solar or have it already, to give them a wash off at least every year or so, ideally two or three times a year and you should see an increase in your generation because of it. Just make sure you're using the right equipment to clean them. You can't go at them with hard brushes and such as that. They are quite sensitive in the way you can scratch the surface and stop them generating as well as they would. So you're best off seeking the services of a professional cleaner so they can come and make sure the system is optimized for the best generation so you get the biggest bang for your buck each year, all year. And just like that, Nathan's got these all cut down. So here, look, the business now along the bottom here. Absolutely fantastic. I am going to clean that off, get rid of that bit of cardboard, sweep and tidy down the scaffold. But otherwise, up on this roof, we are done. And these are 425 watt trainers. It is a bit overcast today. You can see there's some blue skies in the distance. So hopefully we get some sunshine on these and we can see what they're chucking out into the system in the not too distant future today. We're just finishing off our sub main, leading off back down to the house, which is just behind that little turret there. So we can um, get that connected and um, jobs are good. So these are 425 watt trainers and they should kick out plenty of power for us. We'll jump down back inside to the Give Energy Hybrid Inverters and we'll run through the commissioning stage and see how all this comes up in the end. So we have our Give Energy equipment all on the wall now. I'm going to run you through exactly what everything is and the way this all works. You will have seen on the prior video getting the feeds for all this set up. So I'm not going to go into great detail on that. You can see it's all the way over there. This is the Give Energy 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. We'll have a look at the terminals on that in a minute. This is the Give Energy all-in-one. These are relatively new to the market. Corey has done a brilliant video on OY Electrical. I'll tag it in the description if anyone wants to go off and watch this. But he's installed one of these already as well. So you can see what he makes of them. Obviously, we're going to share it here on our channel as well. And then over here, we've got the Give Energy Gateway. Now, this is for consumers to access. Obviously, all these live parts will be covered over. There's some front plates to go on. I'll show you that at the end. But I wanted to explain how this all works with the wiring visible. And we'll start with the gateway because that is essentially the gateway. It does what it says on the, the tin. All of the other components of your household electrical system come into this box and you see at the top there's, there's quite a lot of electronics up there i can see a load of capacitors transformers microchips relays everything that makes the magic happen basically is up on that top circuit board and then we've got all things that we'll be used to seeing as electricians from our um, bus bar type connectors and also spds circuit breakers rcds and we'll run through that in just a minute you can see on this side, basically we have our grid feed coming down here. We popped a switch fuse in near the meter cabinet and I'll show you that down the other end in a minute. And we've brought this 25 mil steel wire armor two core cable down to the gateway to help us subdivide from that point for the rest of the installation and tie in the renewables. So your grid connection goes in on this side. So this is a 100 amp circuit breaker C type and wires into there. There is a bypass mode here, which would essentially link out to make sure if there's an issue in the wider system and you just want to connect to the grid, you can do that and everything else is bypassed. So that's what that middle switch is for. And then we have the load um, MCB slash isolator here. And this goes off to our consumer unit. So this set of tails drops down, runs through this bit of trunking, across and away through that trunking into that board over there. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. And all of our sub mains and final circuits run from that board. Then we've got these two over here. And this is again an MCB with an RCD attached on. So a 30 milliamp and a C32 breaker. This one runs down and you can see it zooms off up into the PV. We'll have a look at the terminals on that in a minute. So this first one is for your PV and it's the AC input. There's no MPPT and DC strings coming in here. It just connects via AC. This one on this side is exactly the same. So again, you've got your RCD and your C32, but that drops down through this AC isolator and into the Give Energy all-in-one battery system. Now, again, this is AC coupled, so it's just feeding AC between 
itself and the gateway. So this can work as an independent item. So this is essentially got connection points on the side here. You'd connect it into your mains and um, it would happily work as a 13.5 kilowatt battery inverter all in one where it takes any excess generation and feeds it into the battery itself and then pumps it back out into the system when you need it. But in this application with the gateway, it works in a similar principle, but tied in alongside the inverter. So on the bottom of the inverter here, you can see we've got these Wago style connectors and just like on the give all in one, so it pops out, you can put your connectors on, just lever, Wago style connectors, they are all identified as well. You can see that on the front with your line, neutral and earth. It's the same on the underside of the inverter. And in this case, we're not connecting the EPS side because we've got the all-in-one looking after the battery aspects alongside the gateway for the off-grid. We've then got our usual strings coming in and there's two sets of strings on this install. And again, they're the Wago style connectors. They just pull out so you can wire it up all the way from the front of the inverter. And that would be where you would connect in your separate battery via the direct linking kit. In this case, we don't have a DC coupled battery, so that's not needed. Now I have brought a connection cable over for the CT monitor in and that's pre-wired to push in on the underside of there should we need it. That feeds back through into the gateway. I wasn't sure if that's needed in this application, but it's there ready to just push in as you can see the other end of it there, if we do. Um, but we'll speak about that in a sec, the way the metering and CT measurements all work from in here. So in principle, that's it. We've got our DC isolators running into the strings, AC out into the gateway. We've got an AC connection from this battery up into the gateway as well. So you can see in the bottom here, we've got loads of space for putting any other CTs. And we've got some here. There is a Harvey in the system. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. But up at the top, we've got some metering and CT for the PV generation and also the grid. And these are pre-wired. This is all done out the box. You can see we've got a CT around our um, line on the loads here. And there's another CT in the back there on the PV as well. So we know what's going to be generated. I showed these on the last video. You can cycle through and get info on your power factor, the current consumption, obviously the um, total usage. So your kilowatt hours measurements stored in there as well. And these link through into the app with the Give Energy system. The app for Give Energy is fantastic. Shared it on another video. Down here, you can see it's got an SPD in it already. So that's good to see. That's all pre wired in and sat in there. So you don't need to worry about an AC SPD. And then there's all your connection points in the back there, should you wish to plug in external CT links to the hybrid inverters and other battery systems and such. And then also, you've got connectors for LAN putting in USB updates and stuff in the back there as well. All of these glands on the bottom all come pre-fitted and they're all labeled as well. So you know exactly where to put everything. We've ignored the grid one because we wanted to gland in our steel wire armor onto the enclosure itself because we're using the armorings outside. We wanted to make sure we were earthing those down appropriately. So we've used a, a nut in the back there, as you can see, and we'll get on with terminating that in a little while. The Harvey, with these, if you get into that dead water situation where there's no current flow through the grid CT, if you're just using the one CT, these can end up losing the charge and stop recording. Obviously with PV and battery storage, you may not have any current flow going to and from the grid. So this would essentially lose all of its um, ability to measure anything. But if you go for the three CTs as we have here, we've got one on the battery, the PV and the grid. There should always be something flowing somewhere to keep itself turned on and measuring. And the reason we haven't got a hardwired CT over to the car port over that side is because we couldn't get one through the existing duct. Obviously these don't react as fast as a direct cabled um, CT link, but the Harvey is more than adequate for ensuring we're recording our data, um, consumption of the EV charger in with the rest of the system if the consumer wants to use the My Energy app. We're not too worried about maximum demand on this install. We've got 100 amp head, and obviously there's elements of the load being taken from the PV and the battery system. So we're really not overly concerned with that. We've also got good subdivision on our circuits. So I think that kind of covers off what all of this is and hopefully explains where everything needs to be wired. Essentially power in, load out, um, PV inverter in, and that can be any inverter. It doesn't have to be a give one and then your AC battery link. And obviously with a battery link, just talking about that, it will take energy in both directions. 
so it'll pass charge back to the house loads and equally when it needs charging up from the sunshine it'll take that power through and the all-in-one system manages all that beautifully another benefit of this system before we close off this little section of the video if you are running in island mode so the grid's gone down consuming power from the battery that'll output a consistent six kilowatt will peak 7.2 but also if it's sunny outside it will output another five kilowatt from this hybrid inverter into the house loads so you could have a potential there of 11 kilowatts and more based on um, what your peak loads might be which is useful when you are trying to get as off grid as you possibly can so there we have our feed in i still need to pop a little air fire lead on into the air fire at the back do that in a second we've got our line of neutral in so neutral loops along into here line loops along into here when you hit the bypass and that will then take power straight out and away bypassing everything else otherwise it will come out of the top here and run into the system to do its magical stuff up on that circuit board and all the rest of the things that make this all work a nice solution from give energy really like it simple to install for us we'll pop the fronts on and we'll run through the step back layout of everything in just a minute to show you the board over here i can't get in too close we've got all the stuff in the way um, but we've got our tails coming down as i said through that trunk in in and away into there still need to pop an end cap on that do that in a minute um loads of spare ways here for matt to then build up we've got our sub mains going off back to the house and off over to the garage area over there and we covered selectivity on all of that on the last video so you can see using electrical om how all this plays out and the issues with fault drop um, down to this point obviously that's a consideration when you're running your sub mains back down and then away into your sub boards you need to factor in fault drop so don't forget that um, and it's brilliant when you use electrical om because it does it all for you in the software and you know what kind of headroom you've got on your sub mains and on your final circuits for as the install builds because when you are doing fault drop it's not a case of running a cable a length of distance and then going to measure the bolts on the end of it it varies based on the load that you're using on the circuit as well so you'll have the load on the sub main going back to our meter cabinet and then all final circuits will have load running on them back to the distribution boards and the cumulative amount of that has to be within the three and five percent tolerances based on if you're using it for power or lighting so you need to factor that in at the design stage otherwise you're going to have trouble especially if you're installing ev and pv where they have these detectors in for under and over voltage you know before you may just have complaints from customers that the lights are dimming when certain things are going on if you've got your design wrong and fault drop becomes an issue but with things like this it's going to be known and seen you've really got to pay attention and put the effort in with your design and fingers crossed everything plays out here nicely because we are well under the percentage limits for both power and lighting so we should be absolutely fine so we've got our meter there with the supply head nice isolator and the tails run down through this into the enclosure below we've got a gland on there so the tails are locked and secured i'm not concerned with any of those coming into contact with anything between a and b so we haven't popped the rcd in there reason being it was an easy point of isolation for us to work on connecting the tails without needing to get the meter man out to come and pull the fuse so that's all done got our banjo on there um all fly leaded up and we just need now to pop our little um, set up to finish this down here clean the top out make sure everything's hunky-dory this is a Hilec enclosure so a D-Box Hilec this is the DED 808 you can see underneath my few hairs glanded us in nicely with our earth lock nut and you can see we've got a little condensation plug on the bottom as well so we're all good to go on that one um, and yeah that, that ticks that off for us really so we have our feed come out of the meter into this down into here to our 25 mil which then runs off to the workshop and everything is subdivided from there and we bring the 25 mil steel wire armor back that tracks through and inside to the main existing house consumer unit which is going to get rewired and replaced as matt does his stuff with the rest of the house so currently going through the commissioning you see we're at 59 percent it wants to restart the all-in-one which it's doing over there now Everything's powered up. You can see we've had the ISA test out and the MFT Pro Plus from TIS doing our AC and our solar PV DC side of things. These two currently aren't talking to each other because they're running through the commissioning, but hopefully they will be doing once we finish that. The gateway is all on. The current flow directions seem right. 
Matthew and Nathan are just sorting out the zappy over at the other side. That's all powered up now. We still need to label the board, obviously, but they have got power over there and they're happily getting the zappy connected to the internet. I'm sorting this out. It takes a bit of time with the commissioning. We've got to run through it on the all-in-one and then on the inverter as well and get everything speaking to each other and registered in the app. So we've got our board all in there now and you can see we've temporarily connected into these old junction boxes over here to power the lights um, and socket as discussed before. Our EV charge points wired in onto this OSB and we're just currently searching for the Wi-Fi network, get that commissioned. The little heater's all in there ready to go. You can see that in the little side place there. So it's neat and tidy, bit of perspex to just drop over those terminals. No single insulated cables all along the bottom there. Got our earth rod in, pit closed up. All the scraps gone from around here now, so we're all tidied away. Um, and that is ready to rock and roll on the IP67 fiberglass board. I'll take you down and we'll have a look in the meter cabinets as well. Matthew's just going to get this online and we can see if the CTs are measuring how they should be. So we are on and working. Everything is commissioned. Um, it wasn't a straightforward process, but I spoke to a really helpful guy called Daniel on the customer support line from Give Energy. This had updated the software, so it reckoned when we ran through commissioning, but when we got through to the configuration stage, it kept saying one of the battery modules software was out of date. He had to do something over the means of the internet and straightened it all out with an update file direct to the battery module, I assume, and that is all now finished and sorted. I did make a mistake on the commissioning because I tried to put all three of these products on the same customer account. You're not supposed to do that, so you keep this separate you can create another sub account just to access for updates and things in your installers portal, but the customer doesn't really need any access to that. We're just using it as a PV inverter. So there's no DC coupled battery. There's really no reason um, to have that commissioned on the app. It's just outputting PV into the system. You still need to be able to CT measure, and we've done that by linking the output on the, the gateway. So behind here, there's some pins where you can take the CT data and pass it over into this so you can see what's going on in terms of the grid consumption and output itself accordingly based upon that we've then got the all-in-one now all connected and this is the hub of everything so now we're all together i'll run through how it works again apologies if you've watched this segment already in the video and understand it skip past it but basically we've got the grid coming in it runs through this main switch into all the electronics that live at the top of here comes down to the load which connects into these tails and swoops and runs across over into our board over there. We have then got the PV which will run down these cables out through the trunking into the PV um, inverter and essentially that is just passing voltage from the inverter back into this gateway so there's no transfer of voltage running back the other way into the batteries as you would normally have with a hybrid inverter. It's just taking the sunshine off the roof turning it into AC and spitting it out into the Give Energy Gateway. So our AC coupled battery runs off this one, it drops down through our AC isolator, in through the side here. We've also got the main on and off switch there, you've told it down to turn it on and off, and the DC MCB for the battery modules, along with a little Wi-Fi antenna that goes through and connects in to the underside of the antenna output. Now this has got an inverter built into it as well with the batteries, hence the all-in-one. So you can just use this as an AC coupled battery system, tying into any solar inverter. You don't have to use a Give Energy one. You could have whatever you like, bumping out that energy, or just a backup battery of its own without PV, <coughs> excuse me, and it will work in its own right. And obviously current is passing through the AC system to go out to the grid through the gateway, but equally when there's excess generation and the batteries need a bit of charge, the power can flow through and into here to store up. So this holds 13 and a half kilowatts and it will output a consistent six kilowatts. It can peak to 7.2. This is a five kilowatt inverter, will peak to six. Now, normally this will work in the grid connected mode. So grid energy comes in and it will try and keep that dead water stage where the house loads will take the solar generation to run themselves. Any excess will go into the battery and any extra after that will export to the grid. Now, obviously, if the grid's to go down and you lose that grid supply, it will then automatically switch itself over to run from the battery and the sunshine if it's sunny outside. So you can have, between those two products, a consistent 11 kilowatts for your house loads if it's sunny enough outside. 
Obviously, if it's at night and there's no solar generation, you're tied to your six kilowatts. And there could be the potential for you to be peaking past that if you've got an EV car charger on, electric shower that somebody's in, or whatever else, and the house loads are a bit high. This runs through what's called a brownout phase, where it will just take the power supply away for the consumers to then reduce the house loads and it'll start to work as normal and power stuff in the house. So there has to be an element of understanding from the customer that it's not just going to run everything because there could be situations where the solar generation isn't enough to cover the house loads alongside the battery, basically. It does alarm. You can transfer that alarm as well via remote contact links over to the house should you wish, um, but it does the notification on the app too, pretty instant, so the customer becomes aware that they've got a problem. And you've got your meters here for both the PV generation as you need and also the grid meter as well. So it's all that's really left for me to do now is put the handover pack on the wall. We have our little pocket, which we'll do. Get all the labels on everything to say about AC, DC voltage, main AC isolators, all the rest of that jazz. Cables in the same containment and otherwise. Put all of that on um, and then make sure everything's sorted out. We still need to put the earth bond clamp on actually onto the inverter. So I'll do that. And then there's the cover cap as well to just go on there. But otherwise, I think that's come up pretty neat and tidy. I hope that's helped any installers out there who've got questions about installing a system like this behind me on the um, wall. And also for consumers who are thinking about trying to get the best system they possibly can to use their solar generation in the most efficient way. We've tied this in with a My Energy Zappy as we showed on the last video. And just to mention, the measurement is done through here. I think I showed the CTs in here earlier on. That's all talking to each other happily through the My Energy app. The customer can see all that data as well. Give Energy do have their own EV charge point product that's maybe out and coming out soon. And that can then be tied in as well to the gateway and all linked together through the same system in a little bit more of an intuitive way than it maybe does having a third party component connected in. But still, the Zappy will run itself happily with those CT measurements from the AC couple battery, from the PV generation and what's going on with the grid. And you can charge your vehicle up as economically as possible should you have the time to do so and not want a fast charge. So just like that we can see we're all labelled up, labelled on the front, inside with the isolator switches, DC labels on the trunking, isolators on the conduit, solar PV on the board. I've also put a solar PV sticker down at the meter cab as well. Pop a little picture up in the editing if I remember. Um, and yeah, that's it. All sorted. I'll show you the gateway. Have a little look at that. You can see at the minute we're generating 1.2 kilowatts. Consuming roughly half of it, the rest is going into the battery, very slowly charging it up. This goes through sort of a commissioning phase post commissioning, if you like. So it does a bit of discharge, recharge on the battery. I guess just to condition the batteries after being in storage, making sure everything's happy. Give energy, say, to give it around 24 hours for everything to just settle down and make sure it's all working as needed. You can see Matt is labelled up inside here as well. Like I say, this is largely empty. Customer's going to bring all of their final circuits from the house down to here over the next few weeks and months. Um, we'll have a little look over at the Zappy while we're on with it. Why not? You can see over here I've been charging my van up a little bit off the sunshine while I was here earlier on this morning, making some benefit of the early morning sun. It's gone away this afternoon. You can see over at the charger, again we're measuring the 1.2 kilowatts going into the house um, and it's just seeing it sat there as the house loads. So you can see, if I can get it to focus, I've gone into the Harvey and you can see the CT readings. So we've got 0.3 amps on the grid CT, we've got 5.3 amps on the solar PV and 2.7 amps, 2.6 amps go into the battery. So that's all recorded inside the app. And then on the main display, see we've got the sunshine going into the house loads with nothing from the grid and a little bit of power that's been put into my van this morning, which is good. We're all buttoned up up here. These final circuits have just been loosely connected into existing junction boxes. Again, customers rewiring all down here. So it's all coming out, but for the minute, they've got power basically to these lighting circuits so they can see, and a power socket that is over in that side just temporarily. Our new EV comes away on the steel wire armor, sorry, the EV Ultra, and goes into our 30 milliamp RCBO within this board. So we're all covered and protected. Everything's powered. We've got a little heater in there, as we showed before. Our earth rods on down into this nice earth pit that Matt is dressed in. The solar array is up on the roof. 
I'll show you that in a little scoot and look at it. You can see we've got our 12 panels up there all doing. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video running through the Give Energy all in one paired with 12 Trina 425 watt panels. And we've also got that um, hybrid inverter and also the gateway. It's been quite an interesting one. The commissioning was a bit of a pain, but we got there. It took about four or five hours, all been said, I would say. So yeah, I had to stop it last night and come back this morning just to finish it. So if you are running through commissioning one of these, allow a bit of time. It might well be worth somehow getting some temporary power to them to get all the software up to date before bringing them to site. We may look at that in the future because it does take a long time. And if you're relying on the customer's infrastructure of Wi-Fi and things, perhaps it can be delayed. Massive thanks to Matt and Andrea, the customers on this one. They've spoiled us rotten in the week or so we've spent on this job overall. I think we've been here seven, eight days, all been said. Um, obviously doing the submains, EV charge point, replacing the consumer unit, putting in the solar PV system on the roof, sorting all the Give Energy stuff out. It's not been as straightforward as a simple PV install, but we got there, we did it. And they've treated us to some lovely lunches. They've been the model perfect customers. And Matt is also coming on the Apprentice One to One podcast that may be out before or shortly after this to talk about his journey through his career and also his route into retraining an electrician. Before he's 50 today, he's got a couple of interviews. He's just gone off to one now, actually. And we'll be speaking about that on the podcast we're recording tonight. So go over and check out the Apprentice One to One channel. Well worth taking a listen to some of the back discussions we've had. We've spoke to people all across industry, people going through the training, lecturers, industry bodies and the rest. And Matt is going to become a new and very welcome guest on that channel. Thank you for watching this one. If you've got any comments, drop them in below as always. I'll do my best to work through and answer everybody who has any queries about the Give system or installs. If you're a customer looking at getting solar PV on your roof, please do get in touch. We are open to discussion with anybody and we'd love to be able to submit a proposal on your latest projects. So do reach out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.